Hey guys, what's up? This is Dan Stevers. Welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Um, this one is going to get you familiar with uh, video editing and how that works. And um, I'm going to be doing two of these. One of them, them is going to be specifically for Adobe Premiere, and then the other one is going to be um, just for Final Cut. So depending on what you're using, uh, we'll, we'll get it covered. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Adobe Premiere. And uh, so first things first, uh, we'll just get to it. Um, we're going to cover uh, just the basics of video editing. Um, I do most of my work inside of After Effects, but um, it all gets assembled inside of a video editing program like Premiere or Final Cut. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the basics of uh, how to work inside of the programs, and so let's get to it. Um, so open the program here, and I'm going to go to New Project. And... Um, Let's find our location for where we want to save this. So let's hit Browse. Um, we'll make a new folder on the desktop, and we'll call it Editing Test. Click Choose. Um, this stuff is fine for now. Um, you might want to choose this to DV, depending on which, uh, what kind of capture source you have. Uh, we're not going to go over video capturing today, but uh, just know that that's important, depending on if you're working HD or not. Um, so I'll call this editing test. Click OK. Oh, also um, below is some footage for you. Uh, you'll see that in a link below. So why don't you go ahead and download that because uh, that's what we're going to be playing with um, today. So click OK. Uh, now all this stuff right here, um, it, there's a lot going on right here with the sequence presets. You got like hundreds of presets here. And then you got all these settings in here. But um, I'm going to show you an easier way so we don't even have to deal with any of this stuff. So I'm just going to click whatever. I'll click OK. And we'll just get into the program here. Um, so let's go ahead and import our footage. OK, uh, so we'll go up to File, and we'll go to Import. And uh, once you import that footage that you just downloaded, um, I'm trying to find it here. It's called sample footage. Import it. Now this footage is uh, some footage that I took uh, last year up in the Niagara Falls region. Uh, I got invited to speak at a conference up there, so I got to take some cool footage of Niagara Falls when I was up there. So that's what we'll be playing with. So like I said, we bypassed all of that setting, all of the settings at the um, beginning here because I'm going to show you the easiest way to get your comp um, to be the same specifications of your footage. So over here in this project window, and uh, it may be hidden, uh, there are tabs up here, so uh, make sure it's, you're on the project tab. And if you don't see any of these tabs for some reason, you can always go up to Window here and just make sure that uh, whatever um, window we're looking for, if you're missing it, uh, look in this dialog here. So we're looking for our Project tab there. So if we click on our sample footage and not click on the name of it, because if you click on the name of it, it's going to uh, uh, want you to change the type there, and that's not what we want. So just click on the little icon here and right-click on it and we're gonna go new sequence from clip and now what this is gonna do is it's gonna match up all the settings in our um, timeline here to the settings of our footage so that way it's perfectly um, it's perfectly sized to our footage and the codec is the same and the pixel aspect ratio is the same and there's a lot of uh, variables that go into video footage and uh, so doing it this way just make sure make sure that um, we're, uh, we got the same settings as our footage there. So um, all these windows here can be resized. You can drag um, you can drag the, the little frames on the side and resize things here. So uh, depending on what you're trying to do, if I'm trying to edit, um, sometimes I'll keep this bigger down here. And then sometimes if I just want to preview the footage, I'll make this real, uh, real big there. And uh, so if you, uh, depending on what window you click on, you'll notice that it goes, it, it makes a yellow frame around it. And that's important uh, when we're working with the timeline here. Because if we want to play our footage down here, we have to make sure that we have our, our um, timeline window down here selected. So it has a yellow 
uh, uh, rectangle around it. And so we can drag um, this little guy here, which is our, uh, our cursor or our timeline marker. And uh, we can drag it through our composition here. We can check out some of our footage. Um, we, can, uh, we can hit spacebar to play it. So let's just uh, go ahead and play the footage. So basically it's about three minutes of just uh, me standing by uh, the falls here and taking some shots. And uh, there you go. So I can scrub through it real quick. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of noise coming from this um, clip here because of all the water in there. Um, so I can disable the audio for the track if I want to. I can click this little icon right here and that will turn off the audio. So now when I hit play now I'm just getting the video from it and uh, you could do the opposite if you wanted to do it if you just wanted the audio from something I could turn off the eye eyeball here on the footage and turn on that and that way I'm just getting audio uh, but for now uh, I'll just turn off the audio and leave on the video uh, we can grab our footage down here and we can scoot it around on our timeline here so if we wanted some black space before our um, before our video starts, we could we could do it like that. Um, we can also uh, use this little um, uh, slider right here to zoom into our footage. If I pull it to the right, it's going to zoom into it. So now when I play it, um, uh, we'll be able to make uh, a little finer adjustments to the edit if we want to do it that way. But if you want to see the whole thing, uh, you can just slide it all the way back. And uh, that way you can uh, kind of check out everything. Um, okay, uh, the uh, easy way to edit your footage is to simply grab the either the head or the tail of the, of the footage on the timeline here and just simply drag it. You'll notice that it, when I go over the left edge here of the footage, it turns into this little uh, red icon here. And that means that if you se select it and just drag it over, um, we're editing our footage. And you'll notice um, below the icon here, it says, uh, it says a number here. And so that means how, how much you're cutting off. So right now I know that I'm cutting off 12, 12 and a half seconds there. So I can do the same thing to the end. I can drag the end and I can bring that in. So if I just want, you know, if I just want a tiny little bit of the footage there, I, I trimmed it up to, uh... so now our, our clip, our three minute clip is only, uh, I don't know, five seconds long or so. Um, I will uh, drag it back out because we want to play around with some of the, some of the shots in this. So drag that back out. You can also drag the slider down here to move around on your um, timeline. Uh, so um, what I want to do is uh, there's a lot of different shots in this one um, long shot. So what I want to do is I want to find different shots within this shot and edit it together. Because there's the, that shot. And then I think there's a, you know, we can have a shot close up of the water there. So we're going to just try to edit um, down our footage and get a couple nice looking shots out of it. So um, if I want the shot to come out of the middle of this, like if I want to pull it out, uh, the way you slice your footage is um, you go over to this tools panel over here and there's this tool called the razor tool. And um, it once you select it, it changes your icon. And now wherever I click on the footage is um, is is where the cut is going to happen. So if I click right there, a cut's going to happen. If I click right there, a cut's happening right there. So now I have um, four independent pieces of footage that I can uh, do whatever I want with. I can rearrange them. I can um, I can edit them separately now. I can uh, you know do little edits like that. Um, I'm going to undo all that and uh, I'm just going to try and find the shots that I want right now. So I like this where it comes over, so maybe right there. Um, rather than selecting this tool, the shortcut is just to hit C. So if I hit C, it changes to that um, the razor tool. I think about C as in cut when I want to make a cut, so I hit C. And uh, now if I hit V, 
Um, it's the same thing as going and selecting the selection tool. So I hit V there. So I'm now back to my selection tool. Um, there we go. And maybe I'll pull the, the front of this um, over a little bit. So, so uh, we're, we're shortening up our, our shot right here. There we go. That looks pretty nice there. You can try to do something similar on yours. Um, now let's go ahead. Um, let's see here. There we go. That looks like a nice steady shot there. So uh, I'm going to drag the head of that footage over and I'm just going to make a tiny little um, selection here. I just want a, a short shot of that. I'll hit C again get my cut tool, hit V again to make my selection tool. Now I'm going to drag it over to um, over to my other clip over here so they're um, budding right up to each other which means it'll just go from one shot to the other. And if yours isn't locking to the, uh, when I move it over it snaps on to the other shot here. If yours isn't doing that um, you might not have this snap tool uh, selected. Right now it is selected. If I unselect it and then drag it over, you'll notice that it doesn't snap anymore. Um, I like having the snap tool um, selected most of the time because uh, it makes it real handy so you don't have to uh, worry about whether you have blank space or whether you're overlapping your footage. So I just uh, click that little magnet button and then slide it right over. And uh, let's just let's try to find one more shot here. Yeah, I like this shot here up close to the water. So I'm just going to do a little edit on that. I'll drag the the end of this in so it's so we're getting just a just a little snippet of it. Um, so now if I select all these and I just drag them towards the beginning of our timeline, now we we edited our three minutes down into these three little shots here. So we have shot one there. So and now it goes to shot two right there, looking good. And shot three is now the close up of the water. Cool. There you go. We just uh, found three nice little shots out of this long, um, long piece of footage there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn back on our audio because we're we'll talk about um, audio and how this works. Um, so I'm gonna expand my timeline a little bit here. Um, right now, the audio, it's pretty loud right now. And I think what we want to do is we'll add some nice music under it. Um, and if we add the music to it, we can go ahead and import a track here. I'll just go to import. And you can import whatever piece of music you want. I've got this nice little track by my buddy Tony Anderson. Um, you should check out his music. I'll, I'll put the link below. Um, but this is uh, a song of his, so I'll just take that and then I'm going to just drag it straight from the project window right into, um, I want to drag it on the track right below the, um, the audio of our video. If I drag it over it, it's actually going to replace it. So now we just um, accidentally deleted our, the sound of the water there. So I'll undo that. So we're going to drag it on the audio 2 right below it. And uh, if I twirl down this little arrow right here, it's called Collapse Expand Track. Now I'll be able to see the, the waveforms in the music that I'm working with, which is uh, usually pretty handy. So if I go ahead and play this right now, um, the water is going to be way too loud. So I can just barely even hear the music in this because our our uh, this waterfall is pretty raging. Um, so if I want to uh, take down the volume on our audio track right here, there's two ways I can do it. I can either just select the track here, and there should be a yellow line on uh, that you can see, kind of right in the middle of the footage here. And if I take if I click on that with my selection tool and I drag it down. Uh, you'll notice that it has a negative number there, which means uh, the decibels that we're bringing it down. So I'm going to drag it down to like negative 12 or negative 13 around there. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for the other two tracks. 
selecting these yellow lines and dragging down. Now if I play it, um, now we should should be able to hear the music as it comes in here. Cool. Okay, so now we can hear the music a little bit better. Um, I think I might go ahead and take it down a little bit more, and I'll show you the other way that you can um, adjust the volume. And uh, the other way is to double click on the um, the video clip in in um, your timeline, and we're gonna go up here. Um, there's You'll see two tabs in this little uh, center window right here, and there's a little scrubbing bar across the top. So I'm going to drag it over until I see effects controls. And then there's this option here that says volume. So I'm going to twirl that down. And uh, I'm going to uncheck this stopwatch here, because if I have this stopwatch checked and I, and I drag this up, um, it, it's actually going to make a keyframe, and we don't want to have the volume change over time. We want the volume the same the whole clip. So I'm going to undo that, and now I'll put it at like negative 20. I'll just enter in the volume level that I want. And if I select my other um, uh, clip here and do the same, I twirl down the volume, uncheck the the um, the stopwatch there and put in negative 20. I'll do the same for the last one. Okay, so now we brought down the volume even more. So now I should hear, hear more of the music and less of the waterfall. Cool. There you go. So we just adjusted the volume on that. Let's talk about doing keyframes um, inside of uh, Premiere. Because uh, what I want to do is I want to have I want to hear the water at the beginning, but I want to have it fade out as the music kicks in. So I want to start with the sound of the water and then fade out. So um, I'm hearing more of the music and less of the waterfall. So I'm gonna go to about two seconds in. I'm going to select my footage here. Now we uncheck the stopwatch before, but what we're going to want to do now um, is we're going to want to actually animate this. So we're going to click on the keyframe now. And uh, so you'll see two keyframes appear. You'll see one right here in this window. Um, and you'll see one right here down um, on your actual footage. And they're, bo they're both the same thing. It's, um, you're just seeing it in two different places. Um, here's a good tip, too. Uh, when you want to scrub through uh, your timeline here, if you hold Shift, um, it will snap your cursor right onto a keyframe if you move it next to it. So that way, it's an easy way to select keyframes. So I'm going to um, hold Shift and select on that keyframe. And then I'm going to set it to negative 10, I think. And then I'm going to go a little bit farther down on our timeline. I'll go maybe to six seconds here. And I'll come back to this window up here. And now I'm going to write something like negative 50. And that should basically make all of our um, volume disappear there. And so we've got two keyframes now. It starts at it starts at negative 10 here. And then from here to here, you'll notice that the value here is getting um, higher and higher until it gets to our last keyframe here at negative 50 there. So now if I play this, um, we should hear the, mu um, the sound of the water louder at the beginning and then it should fade out. Cool. So I, I, think, I think that's real nice there because you get the sound of the water and you get to hear that. But then once the music comes in, then it's about the music because then the music takes over. Um, cool.
cool. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and select the our other shots here, and I think I'll take the volume out of them all together. So I'll just drag this little um, yellow line all the way down till it gets to like this zero zero um, dB, which means it's like com completely out. Cool, there you go. Um, so now let's talk about some other options here. Um, let's talk about transitions. Um, if we go up to our effects panel up here, and we go to twirl down this arrow for video transitions and twirl down for dissolve, um, the one we're looking at is gonna be called cross dissolve. So if I grab this and I drag it on, um, on the space between both shots here, you'll notice um, that we get this uh, little square here. And if I let go on it now, now we just created a transition. Um, now, here's a good time to talk about this colored bar up here that you'll see on the top of your timeline. If something is red there, it means that it needs to be rendered in order to be played. So um, the way you render it, uh, the easiest way is just to hit return on your keyboard and it'll uh, do a little render. And now you'll see that that red bar turned green, which means that it's rendered and now you'll be able to play it back uh, just by hitting the space bar. So now uh, we added a transition, we rendered it, and now let's check it out. So uh, you'll notice it, it's creating a smooth little dissolve between our two shots there. And we can adjust how long we want that transition to be simply by um, grabbing the ends of our transition here and dragging them out. Um, we can drag it out that way a little bit more and maybe this way a little bit more. So this is gonna make our dissolve take longer to, um, to finish. So I gotta do the same thing. I gotta hit render to um, so we can preview that dissolve. So uh, now we'll see a little bit bigger. Here's another tip too, um, whatever window you're on, if you want to full screen it, um, you select the window and then you hit the little, I think it's called the tilde key. It's the key that's right next to the one on the top of your keyboard there, so it's on the very top left. So if you hit that, it's the, it's the little squiggly line, hit that and it will make your um, preview full screen, which is pretty cool. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to see it full screen like that sometimes. So let's just hit play and check out our dissolve. Cool, so now our dissolve took um, a couple more seconds to finish. Um, so uh, if we want to un full screen this window, we just hit the tilde key again. And uh, you can do the same thing for any of your windows. If I select the timeline and hit it like that, if I just want to see the timeline and work in here, I can do it like that and hit the tilde key again. Um, so that's a good tip. I'm going to go ahead and save this because I realize I haven't saved in a while. And uh, that can be the worst experience ever when your computer crashes or something and you haven't saved. Um, so let's go ahead and look at um, different types of keyframes. Um, if we wanted to do a fade in the beginning, uh, we could we could keyframe the opacity of our footage here. So if I select my footage, and then I go up to this uh, our effects control here. Remember, um, there's a slider up here, and it might be on your footage, or it, um, but we want to select effects control. And uh, I can twirl down the opacity, and I'm gonna undo the stopwatch there, and I'm gonna go to maybe two seconds and I'll hit the stopwatch there. And so that set a keyframe at two seconds at 100% opacity. Now if I go to the beginning and now if I enter zero there, it's gonna set a keyframe there. And now you'll notice our bar turned red up here again, which means that we need to re-render it again. So I'll hit return, do a little render. Now if I play it, it's going to, uh, we just animated the opacity coming in so it should fade in now. There you go. So now we created uh, this little opacity fade um, at the start of the video here. And uh, 
There you go. And the opacity bar, it's got, you'll notice a yellow line on there similar to the yellow line on the keyframes. And it works the same way. You can, t you can grab that bar and you can drag it down and uh, you can lower the opacity like that. Right now we're at 23% opacity, so uh, we're just barely seeing it. I'm gonna undo that because uh, there's no reason why I want that to be at 23%. But uh, maybe if you were overlaying different types of video, uh, you, you wanted to like blend them together, uh, that's one way you can do it. Um, let's see here. Let's talk about uh, bringing in a picture because um, every now and then you're gonna want to bring in a photo inside of Premiere. Um, so let's go import. Uh, got a picture here you can do whatever picture you want just bring a picture in and if we take that picture and we drag it into our timeline I'll drag it to the end here um, it's going to drop it in there now it may not be uh, it may be way too big for your shot like this uh, oh, this one isn't too bad um, but you can select the 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 photo here and then come up to our effects control and adjust the scale of it uh, so I think I'll make it a little bit bigger and I think we'll animate um, we'll animate the uh, the scale of it so our last shot here it'll cut to this blue sky and we'll we'll, we'll give it a little movement to it um, if I hold shift uh, it's the same trick I told you before and drag it along the timeline you'll see it's the uh, cursor snap to the footage so if I uh, hold that, snap it to the, the start of, the, of this photo here, go to our effects control, set a keyframe on the scale here, and I'm going to drag this out so uh, the photo lasts a little bit longer. Um, maybe I'll go like four seconds down, maybe a little longer. And if I shrink the scale on it now, it's going to set a keyframe there. So now, um, now our photo is uh, scaling down. So it gives a little bit of movement to it. We can do the same thing for any of these. We could animate the position. We could have it like panning across the photo. Why don't I just do something crazy and we'll just uh, animate the rotation here. So I'll go. I'll hold Shift and go to the end of my footage. Now, if you hold shift and go to the end, you'll notice that um, it ends up being black, what it snaps onto. So I actually want to go one frame into it because I still want to be um, on the actual photo itself, not on the frame that starts after this shot. So if I hold shift, select the end of the photo, and then push the left arrow key, that will move the timeline cursor o over one frame. Um, you can use the arrows to navigate around the uh, the timeline by moving just one frame at a time if you want to uh, do it that way. So I'm just going to move one frame in, and uh, I'll set a keyframe for the rotation at zero. I'll go to the start of it, and maybe I'll put the rotation at like five, maybe a little bit more, maybe like eight. So now I uh, set keyframes for both the scale and the rotation of this um, photo there. So I'm going to hit. Um, enter to do a render and now we'll check it out cool it's moving kind of slow but I, I kind of like that because it fits with the uh, kind of fits with the music um, let's talk about one last thing let's talk about adding titles um, because often you're going to want to add titles to your projects. Um, it's been a while. Okay, yeah, there. that's how you do it. I don't normally do titles in um, Premiere because I like to do them inside of After Effects because uh, you can make them look a lot nicer. But you can add titles inside of Premiere. Uh, you just go up to File, go to New, and then Title. And uh, all that is fine there. And I'll just click inside of this dialog now that we have that open and I will call this Canada because that's where my video was from um, I'm not gonna play around with all the options in here but there are a lot of options for uh, what you can do with the type in here so I'll just uh, close that out and now I can drag my title over 
our um, blue sky picture and that will overlay our title onto this blue sky picture here and I can add transitions to the um, to the title as well um, you don't have to do opacity keyframes like I showed you before it's uh, it's often easier to just drag a cross dissolve onto uh, the front end of the title and I'll do one on the back end too and maybe I'll drag them out a little bit um, so they take a little bit longer um, hit return to render and now we should have our titles fade into this photo cool I'll uh, maybe drag this out a little bit so it takes a little bit longer and I'm gonna hold shift uh, like I've been uh, telling you guys about hold shift uh, select the title I'm gonna go up to effects controls okay yeah so if you just select the title and go to effects control you can um, animate the scale and position rotation opacity to all this just like you could on uh, on your footage or on a still photo so I'll hold shift and I'll set a keyframe for the scale I'll go hold shift and go to the end and then I'll push left um, the left arrow key to make sure I'm actually on our footage here I'm on the last frame and I'll set this to um, like 110 and so now we have our Canada and um, now our Canada is uh, growing over time uh, looks a little bit nicer you know rather than just a, a static piece of type so I'll hit return and now we'll check it out Cool. Maybe I'll I'll do one last uh, dissolve at the end of our photo here, just so it has an end on there. Cool. There we go. I'll show you how to do a transition on the audio too. Um, I want our audio to end pretty much after our uh, after our video is is over. We don't want our audio to keep going. So I'm going to hit C for the um, razor blade tool, uh, and I'm going to select a little bit after our our footage ends I'm gonna hit V I'm gonna select this last half and I'm gonna hit delete and now um, there are video transitions and then there are audio transitions so I'm gonna fold up the video transitions go to our effects window fold down the audio transitions go to crossfade and I will go to constant gain there drag it on to our audio um, there are three different types of audio transitions and you can experiment with them and see how they sound different um, So now we uh, just added a transition to our audio here I'll drag it out a little bit more. So now if we hit play our audio should fade out um, a little bit after our photo fades out Cool. Um, so there you go. We got like a complete little package here um, for this for this video. Um, one last thing I want to show you guys. Um, I'm gonna select our one of our our last shots here. I'll hit Command C. Go down a little later in the timeline. Hit, hit Command V. Um, if you right click on the footage, say I want to uh, slow this footage down. Um, to just give it a different look. Uh, you can right click on the footage, go to speed duration, and um, I always forget whether it's higher or lower. I think it's lower. I think at the speed I want it to be 50%. And if I click OK, yeah, there we go. Uh, so it stretched it out, so it slowed it down by 50%. Um, right click on the footage again, and um, there's an option here that's called frame blend. I always make sure uh, I always like to make sure that this is turned off because I don't like how it makes it look when you slow down your footage um, you can play around with how your footage looks with f frame blend on and frame blend off and yeah you might might like it but personally I don't like how it looks um, also uh, we didn't talk about this but this little bar up here if I hit um, render right now uh, it doesn't do anything I want to render this footage over here but for some reason when I hit return right now it's not rendering it and that's because it's only going to render things that are inside of this um, little 
slider right here. So if I want to render this, I got to make sure that I pull this over so it's um, it's got this inside of it. Now if I hit return, now it renders it. Okay. Um, so let's play this, see how our footage at uh, half speed looks. Maybe half's a little bit too much. It's feeling a little jerky, but... Uh, Um, let's go to our speed. Let's go to like 75%. Do another uh, quick render. And there we go. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Why don't we just turn on frame blending right now just to see uh, what it looks like. It might be okay with this water shot because it's everything's pretty fluid, the motion. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't mind that on this. I don't mind the frame blend on this. A lot of times it just makes it look really blurry and kind of mushy the footage. Um so there you go. Um that is the basics of editing. Now, uh in order to get your video out of Premiere once you're all set, ready to render, uh this little bar right here that we just played with a second ago is very important when you're rendering out. Because when you render out a video, it's only going to render the area that's um, inside of this bar here. So I want to drag it to the end of my audio there, um, drag the tail end. Uh, you can also drag the beginning of it, but my video starts right at the beginning, and that's where I want it, so it's fine there. So I'll drag it until it um, snaps to the end of my audio there. And now I'm going to come up to File, and I'm going to go to Export Media. And there are just as many options when you're outputting as there were at the very beginning of this tutorial when I said uh, don't even bother with that. And I'm going to tell you don't even bother with this again because there's an option here called match sequence settings. And if I click that, um, it's going to do the same thing that it did when we brought in our footage. It's going to match um, the size of our footage, the codec, the quality, everything about it is going to match. So checking match sequence settings. Um, is going to be a real lifesaver for you. I also like to just check use maximum render quality because honestly I don't even know if it looks better with it but I just uh, I feel better knowing that that's checked. <laughs> so um, now that we're ready I'll click on export. Oh uh, before I do that um, if you click on output name up here we can figure out where we want our uh, render to be placed. So it's going inside of that folder I did before and Maybe I'll make a new folder called Renders, and I'll have it go in there. Click Save. Now I'll click Export. And there you have it. That's your, uh, your first uh, video edit and render inside of Premiere. OK, so now, uh, now that you got your video rendered out, uh, it's right here in this folder that we um, set up. And uh, there you go. That's pretty much the basics of video editing. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you're interested in Final Cut 2, I'd say check out the uh, Final Cut video editing tutorial. A lot of stuff is real similar in Final Cut. Um, and if you know one program, it's pretty easy to hop over to the other one. Um, but yeah, that's all for now, guys. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you guys.